Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to my viewers from around the world, especially here in the state of Vermont in the United States. Today is a wonderful day. Yes, it is, because you are here, you are listening, you're going to listen to the Word of God. My name is Reverend Ramona Guadalupe. This ministry comes to you from the Hesabah House Church Ministry and the Promises of God. It is a bilingual ministry. I pray that you will be blessed today by hearing the word of God today. And it's a pleasure if you're joining me for the first time, you will be blessed by the word, not only today, but for the rest of your life. Bienvenidos a todos. Yo oro que en este día que sea bendecido para ti. Mi nombre es Pastora Jamona Guadalupe. Este ministerio viene de las promesas de Dios. Yo oro hoy. Que el Señor te vaya bendiciendo con la palabra del Señor. Este ministerio es en inglés, también español. Yo oro que el Señor te vaya bendiciendo, no solamente este día, pero para que tu vida. Vamos para el libro de Apocalipsis, capítulo 22, versículo 16 a 17. Beloved, let's go to the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 16 to 17. And the word reads, 16, chapter 22. Verse 16 in the book of Revelation, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. The spirit and the bride says, come. And let the one who hears says, come. And let the one who is thirsty come. And let the one who wishes to take the free gift of the water of life, the word from the Lord for the people of God. Beloved, this is the third week of Advent. Advent, this, the, we're already the third week. And next week, we're going to look at the blessings of God that he has given to all of us in this world, beloved. Advent, let's go right away. But before I do, I'd like to acknowledge that are during this time, let's not forget about those who have suffered, that are still suffering from the war in Ukraine and Russia, um, Russia with Ukraine, and then with Israel, with Hamas, and so many lives has been lost in, in um, Palestine. The Palestinians are suffering immensely. Let's keep them in prayer that the will of God will be done and cure those tears and, and heartache that people are going through. And not only that, but there's a big storm that is heading um, from the south to Florida, and then we'll be heading up north. Let's pray. Keep those in prayer and prepare for this horrible storm that is heading our way. But remember, prayer is powerful. God moves when he hears his people praying. Let's go <clears throat> to the book. The Hebrew text, the Old Testament. Let's go to the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 7. 2 Samuel, Baba Libro de los Segundos de Samuel, capítulo 7. Y la palabra dice, the word reads, I, after the king, was settled in his palace, and the Lord have given him rest from all, from his enemies around him. He said to Nathan the prophet, I am, here I am living in a house of cedar while the ark of God remains in a tent. Nathan replied to the king, whatever you have in mind, go ahead and do it for the Lord is with you. But that night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan saying, go tell my servant David this is what the Lord says. Are you the one to build me a house to dwell in? I have not dwelled in a house from the day I brought the Israelites up. Oh, gee. Up out of Egypt to this day. I have been moving from place to place with the tent as my dwelling. Whatever I have moved, with all the Israelites, I, uh, all Israelites, did I ever say to any of the rulers who I commanded to shepherd my people, Israel, why have 
you not built me a house of cedar. Now then, tell my servant, David, this is what the Lord Almighty says. I took you from the pasture, from tanning the flock, and appointed you ruler over the pe my people Israel. I have been with you wherever you have gone. I have cut off all your enemies from before you. Now I will make your name great, like the names of great men on earth. And I will provide a place for my people, Israel. And I will plant them so that they can have a home of their own and no longer be disturbed. Wicked people will not oppress them anymore as they did at the beginning. And I have done ever since the day that I appointed leaders over my people, Israel. I will also give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord declares to you that the Lord himself would establish a house for you. May the Lord add a blessings to this reading. Wow. Let's look at what is happening here. Have you ever read or have seen a child that once they have succeeded in life, or not necessarily succeeded in life, but has done well in life, that they decide to build or buy their parents a home and surprise their parents? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. A matter of fact, I am witness to that. I am witness as growing up, as many of you already know that I come from a very large family. My two oldest brother and sister, the eldest one, they got together and they helped to buy my parents' home. Yes, the older one, the two older one, but especially my sister, they helped to put a down payment on my parents' home. But at that time, the down payment was so ridiculous. I mean, because compared to today, oh my goodness. It, this was 19, I think it was 1966 or 63. I can't remember exactly verbatim, but it was during that time, 1963 or, or 66, the house to give a down payment, it was ridiculous. So they felt the need because we needed more elbow room. But there are many stories that children has built their parents or purchased their parents a new home, brand new home for their parents. And the parents become delightful and say, son or daughter, you shouldn't have. And the child would say, mom, you have taken care of me all these years. You and father, and father have taken care of me and you need a comfortable place. And even to this day, year 2023, many parents, right now, a lot of the children, um, they don't want to put their parents in a nursing home, which is devastating. But what they do is they build on an attachment or they renovate another room so the parents could have a home for themselves with all the living things that they need, beloved. So here it is. David wants to build a house for God. Because his God has given him rest from all his enemy. Now let's keep in mind that God himself promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob the promise that he will multiply. And David, the second king of Israel, he tells the God tells the prophet, this is what you're going to do. But then I'm going to give you rest. See, David was a man of he was a warrior. He fought. And God's hand was with him that every battle he won. But God saw that David was a man of blood, too. I mean, come on. The battle that he went through and so on. But God did not want David to build the house, but he promised him that the, his heir, he was set on the throne forever. That is the love of God. The love of God, 
that it was hidden from the people at that time. Now, here it is, the second Samuel. God promised. He says, and now I tell my servant David that this is what the Lord Almighty says. I took you from the pastor, from tending the flock, and appointed you rulers over my people, Israel. I have been with you wherever you go. I have cut down all your enemies from before you. And now you want, and, and now I will make your name great, like the name of great men. And I will provide a place for my people and plant them so that they can have a home of their own and no longer be disturbed. Wicked or oppressed will not be oppressed them anymore. And they at the beginning and have done ever since I, the time that I have appointed a leader over my people, I would also give you rest from your enemies. The Lord declares to you himself will establish a home for you forever. And he goes on here in this chapter, he goes on, Jehovah God goes on. He tells David that he would establish his heirs. You continue to read the chapter. Beloved, as we are here, God is a God of love. You woke up this morning. Yes. You took a shower. If, you, if you're homeless, there's still places that you could go and be blessed. Some of you are living in, 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 in vans because you're homeless, not out of luxury. Some of you are living in your car. Some of you are living in the street. Keep in mind that God is God of love. He always provides a way. You know, many times people who are homeless, not because what they have done is a circumstance of the economy, makes it very difficult. There are people who are homeless that are working two jobs and they cannot have a home. But God will provide for them a home and will bring peace and love and hope by faith. And it has been established. David wanted to build a house for God. Can you imagine that? Oh, how wonderful it is when our children see the work that our parents do each time, beloved. Now, I want you to remember that this promise of love that God has for his people, it is immensely the love that he has because he continued that promise, that love that he has for us. In the book of um, Luke, here is the promise that has been promised, you know, to the people of not only to the Israelites, but to the whole world. When we look at Luke 20, um, chapter 1, verse 26, here Elizabeth in Luke, Elizabeth, which was a woman that she was barren, and she gave birth. People didn't believe she was old already enough. She was already past her due time to, to childbearing. And the promise that God has promised that he sent an angel to the Virgin Mary to fulfill that promise that he made to David, King David. And I want you to understand this, beloved, as we celebrate love, Advent of love. The love that God has for his people that he started when Adam and Eve sinned against God and Satan. What he did, he challenged the first creation that God created. Because remember, I want you to remember that Satan was an angel. He walked up and down the court in the kingdom of God. Yes, he did. But he rebelled against God. He wanted to be God himself. This man wanted to be, this angel wanted to be God himself. That he challenged God. That eventually God got rid of him and a third of the stars came along down to earth. And that's why woe to the earth because the angel Satan is here with a vengeance. See, he knows exactly how to live in the presence of God because our adversary lived 
in the presence of God. So what he wants to do is make you doubt the promise of God. But I come to bring the word of God, the promise that he made to David, King David, the second king of Israel. And even the apostle Paul reminds us, the apostle Paul reminds us in the book of Romans. Let's go to the book of Romans chapter, book of Romans chapter 16. He goes and he tells his people. Now here is chapter 16. Verse 25, el libro de Romano, capítulo 25 del libro de Romano, versículo, um, excuse me, versículo, excuse me, versículo 25. Let's go to the book of Romans, chapter 16, verse 25. And this is a, um, the Apostle Paul was incredible. He, he write eloquently. He makes things really clear. Some of the stuff a little confusing. But the Holy Spirit gets understand the beloved. He tells the church in Rome. He tells them on verse 25, chapter 16, the book of Romans. And it says, now to him who is able to establish you in according to my gospel, the message I proclaim about Jesus Christ in keeping with the revelation of the mystery hidden for long age past. What now revealed may known through the prophet writing by the commands of the eternal God so that all Gentiles might come to the obedience that comes from faith. To the only wise God, be glory forever through Jesus Christ. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to that reading. Beloved, the mighty king, Jehovah, the one that created heaven and earth, beloved, he comes and he gives the message to the prophet for the Israelites to be protected. And God, he promised David that there will be somebody on the throne forever that will be his heir. This was 2 Samuel. If you continue to read 2 Samuel, because, you know, God has given Prophet, one thing about Jehovah God, whatever he gives you is yours. Now, if someone tries to take it away, hmm, God is territorial. He promised and God is faithful, but he wants us to believe in the faith, in the words that he gives to his prophet, the commandments. Things were hidden back then during the time of age. Things were hidden. People couldn't see it quite clearly, you know? So therefore, now we know, and it's through faith. When Jesus came, it's through faith. The promise, beloved, what God has planned for all of us, he has his plan for good, not for evil, beloved. And as we celebrate the love, the compassion, because once God shows you and open up your eyes and open up your heart and give you, open up your ears and give you understanding, beloved, no one is going to take that away because he loves you. He cares for you. That's, this is the God that I preach to you each week, beloved. And I want you to understand and have a deeper understanding. Continue to read the word of God and, and, and believe him by faith. But the only way that you will be able to understand this is by receiving Christ Jesus. And what we do is we say, Jesus, come into my life. If you have not received Jesus Christ, or if you're sitting on the fence, you're celebrating Christmas, you got your Christmas tree, you, everything is decorated, it's like the present, you're allowing Jesus to come into your house, invite Jesus into your house, beloved. You have your house so pretty, and even if you don't have a home, whatever trinkling you have to remind you about Christmas, about the gift that God has given to the world, you, I said, Jesus, come into my life, come into my heart house the house of your heart 
As soon as you say, Jesus, forgive me for my sins, be my Lord and Savior, he will come in and sup with you because he's constantly knocking. Jesus is always knocking to come into your heart, beloved, but it's by faith. So as we celebrate the advent of love, we celebrate it of hope and peace and now love and joy and now love. There is no other love than Jehovah God that has given, has given us the only begotten son. So beloved, let's pray. Blessed Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, has I given the word to your people, let it be that it was pleasing to you. Open up the eyes and the ears and give them understanding into your words. Blessed Father, especially those who have received you silently, that you come into their heart as they confess for the Lord Jesus to be the Lord and Savior, and for that, for you to forget their sins. Protect them and guide them. Open up the eyes and the ears and understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. Beloved, if you don't have a Bible, you could always go. You have your cell phone, you have your smartphone, you have your tablet, you have your computer. Go to Bible Gateway. Again, Bible Gateway. And it's all the language in the world that if you don't understand English, if you don't understand Spanish, you could go according to your language. See, God is into language. He made us. All of us at one time used to speak one language. But because of our disobedience, God changed our languages. That's right. So, beloved, keep in mind the love that God show, has shown us. And the, one of the greatest commandments is love God with all your might and all your soul and all your understanding. Likewise, love your neighbors as yourself, beloved. God is wonderful, beloved. Hold on to that love. Because we coming into the end of the year, beloved, God is love. Keep that in mind. And he loves you. He cares about you, beloved. Oh, yes, he does. Until God brings us back again next week, may the peace of Jesus and the love of God surround you and your family and keep you safe. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all. Que sea bendecido. Hasta la semana que viene. Que sea bendecido por el amor de Dios y Jesucristo. Amen.